Hello, hello. Welcome to this video about angle pairs. Really, we're just talking a lot about angles today and how to find their measurements and so on and so forth. And there's a bunch of these guys highlighted terms in this chapter 8.1, section 8.1. So let's get right to it. Um, <clears throat> an angle, that is an angle, right? And typically there's like a vertex and maybe you'll have little arrows there. But this angle, uh, just a quick review, is this a 90 degree angle? You should remember that a 90 degree angle is any perfect corner like the corner of this paper, right? That's 90 degrees. So this uh, looks a little bit less than a 90 degree angle, right? So we call that acute. <coughs> 90 degree angle, we put a little box in there like that. That means that is a 90 degree angle. So if this is an acute angle, what degrees could it possibly be? Well, it's got to be somewhere in between 0 to 90 degrees, right? And it's barely below 90 degrees, so it's like, I don't know, maybe 80 degrees, right? And then what do we call, well, that's not a very good example, like that. What do we call a big angle like that? Obtuse, right? And that is more than, greater than 90 degrees. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take a look at these terms here. A straight angle measures 180 degrees. Well, here's 90 degrees, and then here's, pretend like you started here, and you're walking that way, you walked, uh, there's 90 degrees that you just made, you keep going another 90 degrees, and you have made a straight line. So check this out. A straight line we call a straight angle. It is an angle, though you might not be used to considering a line an angle like that. It is. It's a straight angle. It measures 180. A right angle measures 90 degrees. Cool. So, <clears throat> two words here that often get confused. Supplementary and complementary angles. Two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures is 180. So if I've got like a 60 degree angle there and a 120 degree angle here, whoop, these two are, they add up to 180. 60 plus 120 equals 180. And we call those these two angles, we would say they are supplementary. You should say that out loud to yourself right now so you don't forget this. Supplementary. All right? If two angles, I'm going to use this one right here, <clears throat> add up to 90 degrees, and so here's a 60 degree angle, and this one would have to be 30 if this total is 90. Then we call that, where is it on the book here? It is complementary. Say that out loud. Complementary, supplementary. So check this out. <clears throat> These two angles here, are they complementary or supplementary? They are supplementary, right? Because 90 plus 90 equals 180. They're supplementary. Okay. All right, they give you another example in your book here. You can stick two angles right next to each other. Um, they, they would be called adjacent angles. But if, if they form a line like this at the bottom, like they're both sitting on one line, I call that, well, not just me, but that's called a linear pair. Okay, so if you hear me saying a linear pair, that means a pair of angles that are sitting on one line like this. So every linear pair like this, this bottom line is a straight angle. How many degrees are in a straight angle? 180 total. So the measure of angle 1, and that's written like this, measure of angle 1, m angle 1, plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. All right, and in this case, and they're supplementary, right? Measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 4 equals 90. Okay, so <clears throat> what if, let's see if I can move this a little bit all 
what if our problem said that angle 1 and 2 are complementary? Complementary should automatically make you think 90, 90 degrees. And I don't really have a great memory trick for that. Maybe with the C in complementary, complementary, maybe in the C you can fit a 90 degree angle in there. <laughs> I don't know. Complementary, 90 degrees. Measure of angle 2 is 32. What would measure of angle 1 be? Well, it'd be 90 minus 32, right? Because 1 plus 2 is equals 90. They're complementary. So subtract 32 from 90. Measure of angle 1 is 58. Not too bad, right? So let me flip the page, and we'll go to vertical angles. And I'll look at you for a second here. What I like to do with vertical angles is use my arms as an example. OK. So I have formed four angles here, right? We're going to call this one the top angle bottom angle. This would be the, I guess it's the left angle and the right angle, okay? Now, if there's a hinge on my arms, as I move like this, I make the top one smaller, what happens to the bottom one at the same time? The bottom one also got smaller, didn't it? If I make the top one bigger, the bottom one got bigger. Would you say that the top one and the bottom are the same? Right now, look at it. Are the top and bottom the same? Or is the top and the left one the same measurement? Mm, the top and the bottom are the same. The right or the left and the right are also the same. That's called vertical angles. Vertical because they are directly opposite each other, right? Could be could be side to side or up and down, but they're directly opposite each other. Vertical angles are always equal. So, enough of me. Let's take a look at your book here. <clears throat> In this diagram, two and four are vertical angles, so they are the same. And if you look at them, they're both obtuse, right? Yeah, they are the same. One and three are the same. Now, let's test your memory here. Notice that there is a linear pair here. Two measure of angle 2 plus the, plus, plus the measure of angle 3 would equal how much? 180, right? Because that's a straight line. This is a straight angle. These two added together would be 180. They're supplementary. Ooh, you could also look at it this way. 1 and 2 are supplementary. 1 and 4 are supplementary. 4 and 3 are supplementary. These would all add up to 180. 2 plus 4, though, would that add up to 180? No. Uh -uh. They're both obtuse. They're both, they're both greater than 90. Those wouldn't add up to 180, but they are the same as each other. So you got to be careful with some of these problems. Let's see what they try to throw your way here. Find measure of angle 2, measure of angle 3, and measure of angle 4. Well, 1 is 90 degrees. So vertical angles means that 3 is the same as 1. So 3 is 90 degrees, right? Um, and then if 3 and 2 add up to 180, because they're a linear pair, then 2 would be 90. And that means that 4 would be 90 because of vertical angles, right? They're all 90. Which brings us to the idea of perpendicular lines. <coughs> You should already know this, but if you don't, those two lines are perpendicular. If they cross each other perfectly to make a right angle, and if they make one right angle, just like we saw in this last problem, they actually make four right angles. Okay. If they make one, then it makes four. Those are called perpendicular lines as opposed to, what do you call these lines, like a railroad track? railroad tracks, this is parallel lines. The t railroad ties underneath the railroad tracks are perpendicular to the actual track that the train goes on, right? Perpendicular and parallel. Alrighty then. Last thing, <clears throat> and the most challenging of them all. How are we doing on time here? I can't even see. Oh, about 10 minutes. Okay. So you know what a parallel line is, they will never intersect, right? 
in the same two lines in the same plane that do not intersect. What they mean by plane is um, this line on my paper, and then this my pen right here. These are not in the same plane. This isn't two dimensional. This is three dimensional. So even though I have my pen oriented in the same direction as this line, it's not because I lifted. I'm lifting this end up. They're not in the same plane, right? But any lines I draw on this piece of paper, they're in the same plane. Because the plane, the plane is this piece of paper. Anyway, I don't even know if you need to know that for this section, but for what it's worth. All right, <clears throat> here is the most challenging part. We have these things called corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles. And these names you will never remember unless you understand the meaning of these words. Now, first thing, this box, you're going to have to look back at this box through this, this chapter, but it's about angles and parallel lines. These two red arrows mean that these two lines are parallel, okay? So if you have two parallel lines, and then you've got this other line cutting through the two parallel lines, then, it, then some special things happen, okay? <clears throat> the idea is that this line and this line are oriented the same way. So if this line cuts through them both and makes angle 2 right here, then it cut through this bottom line the same way. So 2 and 6 are the same measurement. Now I want you to look at 2. Is that acute or obtuse? It's acute, right? Look at angle 6. It's acute. Does angle 6 and angle 2, that angle and this angle, do those look the same? Yeah, they do. And guess what? They are. Those are called corresponding angles. 2 and 6. What would the corresponding angle with number 1 be? Angle 5, right? 1 and 5 are corresponding. Is 1 and 7 corresponding? Mm, no. 1 is obtuse, 7 is acute? No. So it works like um, you follow this line that's cutting through the parallel lines, and um, if you yeah, like right after this line, you got the right side. Then right after this line, you got the right side. Those two are corresponding. I'm trying to explain this in different ways here. So 1 and 5 are corresponding. 2 and 6 are corresponding. There are more corresponding angles, as you can see here. 7 and 3 are corresponding. All right, because this is before you get to the line, and it's on the left. And keep going up before you get to this line, and on the left. 7 and 3, and 8 and 4 are corresponding. Now there's all different there are all different words and terms and things going on in this one picture. For example, do you see any linear pairs? Do you see any every linear pair by the way is supplementary. Do you see any supplementary angles that add up to 180? Yeah, 1 and 3, 1 and 2, 2 and 4, 3 and 4 and oh these pairs down here too. Do you see any vertical angles? Yes, it's all going on in here. Okay, corresponding angles, boom, two corresponds with six, one with five. All right, you get the picture. Alternate interior. Alternate means that as we travel up this line, there's a special word for it, it's called the transversal because it's transversing the parallel lines. As you travel, as you look at this line here, Alternate means alternate sides of that line. And interior means inside the parallel lines. So 5, 6, 3, and 4 are all, are all interior angles because they're inside the parallel lines. But alternate interior ones would be 5 and 4. 5 and 4 are on alternate sides, but they're both inside the parallel lines. So they are congruent. They are the same. 5 and 4. 3 and 6 are the other alternate interior angles. Okay, And then we have alternate exterior. 8, and the alternate side is on the left side, but exterior would be 
1 up there. 8 and 1 are alternate exterior, and they are the same measurement. And 7 and 2 are alternate exterior. Alternating sides of this and exterior, outside of the parallel lines. Whew. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's do a little practice with that. Oh, we're at 15 minutes, so let me just do a couple practice problems and get you on your way. Use a diagram to find measure of angle 1. Measure, angle 1's way out here, and the only thing we know is 125. So we have to start thinking, what else can we find out? Well, angle 6 is a vertical angle, so it's the same as 125. So angle 6 is 125. <coughs> Are 1 and 6 corresponding? No, they're not. 1 and 5 are corresponding. Are 1 and 6 alternate interior angles? No, because 1 is outside the lines. Um, yeah, 1 and 6, they don't correspond with each other at all. Okay. Are, is 125 the same as 1? No. So, how about we do this? Angle, or 125 and angle 8 make up a linear pair, right? That is supplementary with that. So 180, so these add up to 180, right? Because this is a straight angle. So 180 minus 20, 125, uh, that difference is 55. So we know that 8 is 55 degrees. Now, are 1 and 8 related? They are alternate exterior angles. Just like up here, 1 and 8, 1 and 8. Exterior, outside of the parallel lines, and they're alternate, so they are the same. So angle 1, measure of angle 1, must be also 55 degrees. Okay? <clears throat> and let me take a look quickly at your section here. Oh, they're gonna throw uh, they're gonna throw some harder problems your way. So check this out. Find the measure of each angle if measure of angle nine is 106. If that's 106, four has to be 106, and then 180 minus 106 would give you three, and then whatever three is, it's the same as ten, and then ten uh, since these are all parallel, ten corresponds with eight and with twelve, so eight, ten, and twelve are the same. 2, 4, and 6 are the same, and 1, 3, and 5 are the same, 7, 9, 11 are the same. All right, there's multiple ways you could get to the right answer here. Okay, just keep flipping back and looking at what it corresponding angles are and alternate interior and exterior angles. Now, <clears throat> last one. Find the value of the variable and the angle measures. Ooh. Pay close, close attention to the instructions. They want to know what x is, but look, they also want to know what the angle measures are. So let's do 16. Measure of angle 1 equals this expression. It's not just like a nice packaged number for us. It's an actual whole expression. Measure of angle 2 equals 28x. Ah. So 5x plus 15 for 1, and measure of angle 2 equals 28 28x. Well, <clears throat> 1 and 2, those form a straight line here. So 1 and 2 are a linear pair. They add up to 180. So I should be able to say plus 28x, right, because this is measure of angle 1, plus this is measure of angle 2. That should add up to 180. Now if I have a plus in these parentheses signs, Plus makes the parentheses signs um, obsolete. So 5x plus 15 plus 28x equals 180. I can add like terms here, right? 5x and 28x gives me 33x plus 15 equals 180. Now I'm going to subtract the 15 from both sides. 33x equals 165. And 165 divided by 33 is 5. x equals 5. Now, we're not done because we just found what x equals. 
So if x is 5, what is the measure of angle 1? Well, measure of angle 1 would be 5 times 5, which is 25, plus 15, which equals uh, 40. 40 what? 40 degrees. Measure of angle 2. Plug the 5 in for x. 28 times 5 gives you, let's see here, 140. Do those add up to 180? 40 and 140? Yes, they do. So, have fun with angles and a little taste of geometry today. See you later.